Good morning. Let's turn to Mark chapter three and discuss a question of priorities. So Lord bless us as we gather together around your word for just a few minutes. We pray, Lord, that we may be on track to hear your voice and follow your will. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So Mark chapter three has this wonderful and quite tough little story at the end of it. Here it is in verse 31. And his mother and his brothers came and standing outside, they called to a crowd. So they sent him and called to him a crowd sitting around. He said to them, they said to him, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. He said, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he's my brother, my sister, my mother. And we already know that members of Jesus's family thought that he had lost his mind and he had become something of an embarrassment. Now they come to the house where he's teaching. It's as if it's a family delegation and they're trying to sort him out. This tricky guy. Maybe they're kind of trying to challenge him about what he's doing. And so here's the message they're asking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? Here they are. So it's fascinating to notice that that twice they're mentioned as being on the outside. And by implication, those sitting around listening are insiders. And Jesus is saying that being on the inside is not a question of location, but relation, relationship. Relationship is not by blood, but by identification with the way of Jesus. To be a Christian is to enter a new family. And this is the implication of this point. This is it. Here we go. The ties are stronger than those of blood. And everyone is seen as a brother and sister. And the insider is defined as someone who does the will of God. Now, this is pretty tough, isn't it? When I think of the decisions that have shaped my own life's journey, many of those have been related to caring for my family. And I read an article quite recently that said Jesus did not promote family values. Whoa. <laughs> and they cited this passage. So is that is that true? Well, in one sense, yes. We are almost incurably self-centered and self-absorbed. Speaking for myself, and I nearly always do, it feels like it's only the love of wife and family that jolts me out of a complete self-centeredness. But the tough truth in this passage is that you either line yourself up with the Son of God or you capitulate to the principle that governs the rest of the world. That's Elizabeth Elliot. Jesus said, Matthew 6, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. All these things. So the point is, it's a question of priorities. It's not an either or. Loving God and putting the life of Jesus first in my life and daily choosing to do so doesn't mean I love my family less. It just puts first things first. In fact, it actually means that I will love them more intelligently. Amen. You with me? <laughs> and to add weight to that thought, it's important to remember that with his dying breath, Jesus showed a real concern for his mother. Do you remember? Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Little short sentences from someone gasping for, for breath. But they're essential. These words must be spoken. He's sorting out his family. So what about Mary then? Was Mary an outsider or an insider? So we know that from Luke's gospel, particularly, that Mary gave an unconditional yes to God. May it done, be done to me according to your word, a complete surrender to the will of God. And it's something that we have no evidence that she ever withdrew. And the prophecy that a sword of sorrow would pierce her heart. Well, she was there. She received that sword. She was with him to the very end and shared the joy of resurrection. And on one occasion when Mary was praised as blessed and privileged, Jesus said, no, blessed are those who keep the word of who hear the word of God and keep it. So Mary is 
an insider, but not because she's the mother of Jesus, but because she identifies with the mission of Jesus, because she's with him to the end. It's a matter of daily determination. And we have to learn this. And Jesus learned this in the Garden of Gethsemane. He says, my, my soul is exceeding sorrowful to die, yet not what I will, but what you will, Lord. It's still the challenge of priorities, even for Jesus, even at the end. So if you want to grow in, in faith, then your first priority is that relationship. And everything comes out of that choice. And if anything has a higher priority than God, then that becomes the object of your worship. So look, I'm just going to state it there. This is the same for me as for you. Lord, we pray that we may hear this call to priorities and that we may learn to listen and learn so to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. May God bless you in the choices that you make today, particularly the choices you make for your family, for those that you love, those around you, and the choices you make for yourself. Help us, Lord, to listen. Amen. God bless you.